Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. This is a newer, our newest uh, Cubix webinar. I'm Adam from Cubix Institute of Technology, and I will be your host today. Uh, if you can hear and see us, please drop a like or something. And if not, then drop a comment below if you can see or hear us. Uh, today, we are going to talk about Android Jetpack Compose and how it has disrupted the way of Android development. This will be interesting even if you are an experienced uh, developer or if you are thinking about just to start developing Android uh, applications. And our professional guide will be Peter Eckler, who's going to show us the differences between the classical way and the new methodologies, mm -hmm. how Jetpack Compose can help you uh, develop um, uh, Android applications. Uh, we are going to have a small presentation and after a live demo where Peter's going to develop a, a small working uh, application in live. So actually, this uh, broadcast is live. You can ask any time about the process or uh, about the technology. I will be here until the end in the background, but uh, at the end, I will come back and we're going to answer any questions what you just uh, dropped us uh, meanwhile. Peter, uh, he has been uh, involved in mobile application for more than 15 years. Currently, he is responsible for the research and development strategy of uh, Zenitech. Zenitech is a London-based IT service and consulting company. But Peter also participates in the product design and development. Uh, beside this, he is an uh, associate professor at the Faculty of uh, Electrical Engineering and Informatics of Budapest University of Technology and Economics. And uh, he was awarded four times, um, I'm sorry, six times, uh, the excellent instructor of the faculty and two times the best instructor of the university. Well, welcome, Peter, and thank you for accepting this uh, invitation from welcome. us. Hello, everyone. And um, just before we jump into this uh, whole uh, process, one more uh, important uh, technical thing. So this, uh, this is a, a live broadcast, but it's going to be recorded. So if you want to try what Peter is going to show or just want to repeat it or you cannot stay until the end, you're going to be able to watch it back, replay it. So if you want to do this, please uh, follow us or subscribe to our channels because they're going to be published there, YouTube, Facebook, and probably on LinkedIn as well. Okay, so uh, why why uh, Jetpack Compose is such a popular thing right now? Uh, is it just a fresh thing or it, it, it's been here for a while, but it has been refreshed in a way that now it can be used in a well uh, way or... Uh, yeah, uh, actually, it's uh, these are very exciting times for Android developers and in Android development because Jetpack Compose kind of gives us a totally new way of creating user interface for application. And uh, as you know, in mobile applications, user interface is kind of the most important thing. And uh, basically 70 or even 80% of the code is about user interface. So we can say that if somebody wants to just start learn Android development, then it's it's the right time because we have a new technology that's just came out and it's it's stable. It has been with us in the last couple of months and years. There was beta phases and so on. But now I would say that it's uh, stable and uh, uh, companies are starting using it for new projects. And also um, when they add new features to existing applications, Jetpack Compose is kind of their primary choice. So I think uh, this is why it's very exciting. And another good advantage is that it makes the coding a little bit easier and you need to write less code and you can do much more things in a more dynamic way, but I will show it in the demo. Okay, then probably you were gonna talk about this in your uh, short presentation, but is it uh, applicable to, to a legacy uh, project or you have to start it from the beginning? Actually both. So if you have a legacy project, you can keep the legacy user interface as it is and the new features, new, new screens can be developed with Jetpack Compose. So you can use it in legacy projects as well. 
And if you start a new project with Jetpack Compose, you can still add some legacy parts into that project. So it can, they kind of works together very well. Nice, nice. It sounds nice. And um, so it, it's like uh, the same as uh, the, um, the Swift UI for iOS developers? Yeah, yeah, kind of the same. Um, if you compare the two code, the Compose code and the Swift UI code, there are many similarities actually. So if you learn Compose, it will be much easier to learn Swift UI uh, as well. So actually, Compose is recommended for you if you are an experienced Android developer and want to learn this new technology. But it's also good for you if you just want to start creating Android applications without any serious knowledge in the, from the past. OK, cool. Uh, but I'm, uh, I don't want to take uh, away your time because I know you, you, you've prepared with uh, many things. So I'm going to go in the background and um, yeah, uh, can you just confirm quickly that everyone can see my screen? Is it working for everyone now? It should be. I think it should be, but yeah, we. we would A little think. confirmation would be great. And then I will start my presentation. Yes, OK, we just got a like. OK, thank Excellent. you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, so probably you, can, you could. Uh, I put uh, it in full screen, full yes. Screen. Yeah, OK. OK, thank you guys for it. OK. OK, then good luck. Thank you. Uh, so uh, hello, everyone. Uh, uh, I was already introduced. My name is Peter Eckler, and uh, I will be with you in this webinar. And actually, if you apply to the uh, Android Compose uh, trainings, uh, I will be your instructor as well. In this webinar, the goal is to show you quickly what is this Jetpack Compose and to create a small application together. I will not go into all of the details, but uh, I will give you enough to be so you will be able to uh, implement the same application by your own as well. <clears throat> Just a quick spoiler: this is the application what we will create. It's uh, actually a Mars Rover Gallery application. This is how I call it. NASA has a great API uh, based on the date. If you send the current date or any kind of date, it will give you the photos which was made by different rovers. Now we will check the Curiosity uh, rover. We will. To develop this application, we will use Jetpack Compose with some basic layouts. Uh, we will use view models, so a little bit architecture will be part of the demo as well to make the code much more maintainable. We will use the retrofit library for network communication and the coil library for uh, image downloading. And altogether, I just uh, I hope you can see it on my screen. I will uh, we will create this application. You will enter here the exact date that you are interested in and it will download the images for us and it's an in a scrollable list we will be able to to see the images which were made by the rovers so that's the uh, uh application but let's not run so fast uh before we jump into the coding let's have a quick uh, introduction about what jetpack is and what jetpack compose uh, is so jetpack is the umbrella uh, above different android technologies where google says that it will be maintained and it will be with us for a long term so everything which is under the jetpack compose umbrella we can say that it's a stable technology and now compose is part of it so it's kind of a suite of uh, libraries uh, why is this Jetpack Compose so interesting? Because uh, earlier, when we created Android applications, we have used XML to describe the user interface and some Kotlin or Java code to implement the business logic around that user interface. With Jetpack Compose, we don't need to use XML to describe the static user interface anymore. Instead, all of the code can be created uh, in a Kotlin language. That's the recommended uh, way. You, Java is also there, but uh, Kotlin is the, the recommended for that, actually. And it's kind of a declarative technology. So we will write functions. We will use all the advantages which a function can have. We will use lambdas. We will use a lot of arguments and reusable functions and all that kind of things. Uh, so the declarative paradigm, which uh, uh, declarative UI paradigm, which Compose gives us, means that. Uh, we will describe the user interface in, in so-called composable functions. And uh, we will create the UR hierarchy basically with function calls. And uh, 
because you know a function it can be very general it can have a lot of arguments and based on the arguments uh, the user interface can display different things and the code can go to different uh, branches uh, that's how we can create a very uh, complex and reusable uh, user interfaces in a simple way uh, and it, it supports uh, so-called state changes and state monitoring so Basically, we will when we design the user interface, we will create it for every possible state. And in the business logic, we will just jump between the states. And based on that, uh, the compose will re-render or recompose the relevant parts which were uh, which were depending on that state that has been changed. It will make much more sense when I will show you the code. Uh, so earlier, when before Jetpack Compose, we have used XML to describe the user interface. We have used functions like find view by ID and view binding and manually in an iterative way, we, we change the user interface all the time. With Compose, we don't need that anymore. So the likelihood of errors will be much less because when we, when you create the user interface, we already consider the different states and everything will be already implemented and ready when we create the business logic behind that. The states, because of the state changes, the, the user interface will be uh, kind of ready for us in, in already. So uh, in, in Compose, the general concept is that uh, uh, the user interface is created with composable functions and uh, composable functions function uh, diff, uh, put the, the different elements on the screen in, in different subcomposable methods. And only those parts of the screen are re-rendered or recomposed, uh, which have been changed uh, or wherever the data was changed, which uh, was displayed on that part of the screen. That's called recomposition. And now let's see a basic Hello World code uh, in Jetpack Compose. The general idea is to create this kind of composable functions. So uh, we have a function, we have this composable annotation uh, in front of the function. The function can take arguments and inside the function, we call these composable functions or elements which uh, use the arguments and that describes the user interface. When you have experience with XML-based layouts, this will sound a little bit strange and you might will really even feel in the beginning that uh, the XML layouts way was a little bit better, but I, I can tell you that uh, when you get used to the Compose, the way how you create applications will be much faster. Uh, the speed will be much faster. Uh, so we use these composable annotations. This is which can be, uh, you can have many composable functions basically. Typically we organize them into separate packages so it will not confuse the other parts of the code and they are responsible for the whole user interface and to get the actions and get the events and get the state changes from the business logic layer or view model layer. A composable function doesn't return anything. Uh, the composable function emits a user interface basically. So if you see that function, it doesn't return anything. Everything which is inside the function will be emitted uh, to the Compose engine, which will regenerate uh, the user interface or create the user interface for us. The composable functions should be very fast and idempotent and free of side effects. So you don't put any um, complex calculations inside composable functions. Those typically go in the view models or repositories or lower layers. Composable functions are just displaying the user interface based on the final version of the data. It doesn't, they typically don't do any calculations. So uh, I, th I think it's time to see some code. Uh, and uh, if you give me a second, I will create now a new project just to have some basic feeling what Jetpack Compose is. So I am opening my Android Studio and uh, let's put this uh, presentation in the background. So I'm opening my Android Studio and I selected the new project button. And now I will choose this latest empty compose activity with materials free template. Um, or, or actually, you know what? Let's just choose the, the basic empty activity first, just to show you the, the main differences because probably many of you are interested in the differences. So I will now create an old version of Android stuff. Uh, so old demo, I will just use the name old demo here. And just a second. And 
it's a standard empty project with the old user interface technology. Uh, and, and I mean old is that uh, the user interface is described in so-called layout XMLs. So you have an XML code and here you can create the static user interface, like I'm creating now a linear layout. In this linear layout, I have a hello world text. I will just give an ID to this text. This is the text view data. It says hello world. And I below that, I will quickly make a button. Button, the ID is btn show. And the text is show time. And this linear layout will have an orientation vertical. So this is a static user interface. If you switch to design, you can see that there is a text and the bot button below the text. And now we switch to the coding part and without using any view binding or any helper libraries for this old uh, user interface technique, I will just use it purely with the default uh, functions. So if I launch the application now, as you can see, it's, uh, it's displaying a basic, just a second, it's building the project. It will display this layout for us because with this line, I'm loading this activity main XML layout, what I have just described. And this is our application with the hello world text. Oops, and uh, uh, sorry, uh, accidentally I went back to the previous application. So hello world text and the showtime button, but they don't do anything. And now if I want to do something when the button is pressed, I need to find the button uh, based on the ID. So everything has an ID like here, ID, ID. <clears throat> so I will just say that find view by ID or uh, it's a button. I have to know that this is a button. This is also a disadvantage that you can make mistakes here if you use a different type here. i.id.btn show and now btn show dot set on click listener. And if it's pressed, I want to display the current time. It's a, a date object initializing with system dot current time in milliseconds dot two string. That's the current date and time. Let me just import it. <clears throat> now I, I need to find now the text wall text. It's a f another find view by ID, R text view, and uh, r.id dot text view data. And now I need to set the text to this current time. So when I press the button, it asks what is the current time. It finds the text view and displays the text here. I already made a mistake, which is very easy to make in this old technique, is that I'm trying to find the text view every time when I press the button. But this is not good because the find view by ID method is kind of a costly method. It takes time for the system to find the elements based on their IDs. So it's, if I put it outside, then at least it just finds it only one time, <clears throat> not every time when you press the button. So this is our code. And now when I press it and launch it, it shows the current time. Good for us. Maybe I will increase the text size a little bit, uh, like 30 SP. Now it will be a little bit larger. So I always have to switch between the XML layout and the Kotlin code when I want to change something on the user interface, which is also a little bit old fashioned and takes time. And now this is the application what we have created. And now let me show you how the same application looks like in Compose. So I will now close this project and uh, create a new one. So new project. And now we will choose this empty compose material three stuff. Next. And uh, the name of the project will be uh, compose time demo. All right. And uh, the big difference what you will see is that we don't have any more layout XMLs. It doesn't mean that we don't use any more resources. We still have the resources folder, the images, the so-called string resources, and many other things are in the resources folder, but not the layouts. The user interface is fully created in Kotlin code. So this is my activity. We still have the onCreate method from the activity lifecycle, but instead of calling the set content view, we don't use that anymore. We use the set content, which, which basically uh, expects to have a composable method call at the end. We use the default theme, use full screen with the default background color, that's fine. And here comes our general content. 
Right now, it generates a greeting composable function, which takes a text here. Uh, and that text will be displayed in this text. So if you launch the application, now the hello cubix will, text will appear uh, in my uh, project. So we don't have the designer screen uh, anymore. The application starts. What we have is a preview. So you can create preview methods, which can call any composables. And on the right side, uh, you can uh, see the, the previews. Like if you turn on this split view, you can uh, see those composable functions in a preview format, which have these preview annotations. In this webinar, I will not use it too much, but uh, in the um, official training, that's a very helpful. And when you create big applications, it's very good to see the previews of your uh, composable elements. But in this webinar, I will mainly focus on the code. So uh, we will not need that too much. So let's create the same application as before. So I will call this my time composable function it doesn't takes any takes any argument i just created this function and uh, it needs to display a text and the button below each other we don't have a linear layout instead we have a column column uh, layout and i will put this text in this column and this will display the hello time and below that i am creating a button and the on click of the button is we find here with the lambda in the training, I will talk much more about these lambdas, the, what are these anonymous function instances and so on. Right now, it's just enough to know that this is an empty on-click listener, so it doesn't do anything when I press the button. And the button needs a text, otherwise it will not display anything. So the text is show time. So actually that's all or user interface. And if you launch the application now, you will already see that uh, the static version of this code is here. It doesn't do anything. Let's just do something when the button is pressed. When the button is pressed, I want to display uh, that current date and time here. So actually, I will change this text. Current date and time is something. This something will be uh, a state. And when I change the state, that will kind of redraw those user interface elements which depend on the state. Just wait until I write the code and then it will, be, it will make much more sense. So this is the car time variable, which is, uh, uh, it will, that will be the uh, uh, state. So I will just say that uh, by remember, and uh, this is a mutable state of, uh, by default, it will just print zero. This is how you create a, a, a state. You need to import some things to make it uh, work. And now it, I with option return or alt enter, I have imported the necessary dependencies. Now I have this current time state and uh, this one, it will display this current time state. Right now it displays a zero string. But if I change the state here when I press the button, then it will automatically redraw those composable elements which depend on this state. So what I will do now is that I say that the current time is the date system dot current time in milliseconds dot two string. Okay, so the same code, the same functionality, what we have seen before, but actually only in, um, I would just say 10 lines of code or something like that. So much smaller, we don't have a separate XML file. Don't forget about that. And it has the same functionality and it only redraws those parts of the UI, which were changed when I pressed the button. So as you can see now, if this is the current time and the seconds are, are changing when, I, when I'm pressing the button. So I, I hope it makes sense. That uh, was a Hello Compose project. And uh, we will use this technology to create this little bit more complex application, what I have uh, prepared for you for today. So uh, we, will, we can share this deck with you. Uh, all of the code is here, what I just showed to you. And uh, this is our working application. And I have talked about the preview possibility as well. In Compose, uh, you have some basic layouts like column, row, and box layouts. 
they are obviously items below each other or organized horizontally to each other and the box allows to have overlapped uh, components. In Compose, it doesn't matter if you have embedded rows and columns, it doesn't affect the performance. Uh, but if you were a big fan of constraint layout from the old Android uh, view technology, I have good news for you. Constraint layout also has a Compose version, so you can still have that fancy features, but you get used to with the Compose, uh, with the constraint layout. And now let's focus on the main application that I uh, want to show you in this webinar, this uh, Mars Rover photo. Uh, we will use the Mars Rover uh, API. I'm sorry, I made a very bad typo here. So the Mars Rover API, it uh, works in a way that um, uh, NASA has this nice API. Just I will just show it to you. This is how their website look like. You can use the demo key for a while, but you can have a, um, a free account uh, very quickly if you just make a registration. And here you can see the different NASA APIs. Like, for example, there is one which is monitoring the near Earth objects, asteroids, and so on. And every day you can see where they are and their current locations. They have photos from the International Space Station as well, different satellite informations, and they have this Mars rover photos which uh, uh, actually takes some parameter and in a JSON format, it will return the photos. You need to send the uh, current date on, on the specific date where you are interested in the photos. You can send your API key, but the default API demo key is also good for 30 requests per hour. And it has this nice URL. And if you open this URL, it will return this JSON string to us and we will parse this JSON string and actually the image photos are located here. So if I select this one, uh, you can see that this is a photo uh, and I will use all of the uh, all of these photos to display them in a list with a Compose UI. As you can see, there is a tiny frog there. No, there isn't. This is on Mars. And as far as I know, we don't have frogs on Mars. Uh, okay, so we will use this NASA API to create this application and we will use some basic layouts in the demo like the column and uh, some other uh, things to create a user interface. So now it's time for coding uh, and after the coding section, I will have some summary advices for you uh, how to extend this application if you want to practice uh, by yourself, how to make it uh, even better or have more features. At the end, I will show you the final version of the code. I have created this uh, repository. We will share this link after the video. Currently it's empty, but after the webinar, I will put the code there, what I am creating for you. Okay, so I will just get rid of the slides, just a second, and let's go back to Android Studio. And I will create a brand new project for us. Brand new shiny project is coming up. So again, new project. In Android Studio, I will use again this empty compose uh, activity template, empty compose activity. And this will be Rover Photo Gallery application. And uh, I just need to put it in the version control folder that I have already created for us. So like here. Uh, it will have a subfolder, sorry, but that's easier for me. Okay, so I think everything is good now. Uh, and in this project, uh, I will use some third party libraries. Now I will be a little bit faster because we have limited time, but of course on the real training, every piece of code and every line of code will be explained in much more details, but I will do my best to explain to you now as well. First of all, uh, in our project, we will use some third party libraries and we will use some uh, additional extras. That's why in the initial project, I need to make some changes. I will use the more, most, more or like the latest Compose version. 1.4 is quite new and the latest kind of Kotlin version, almost the latest 1.8.10. So I change it in this build gradle. And in the other build gradle, I need to set here the Kotlin compiler, some of the newest ones. I will use a better material library, which has a little bit more components. It's 
1.0 and I think it already has a release candidate 01 version. Yes, and we will need some additional libraries here. For the network communication, we will use the retrofit library. For the JSON parsing, we will use the Kotlin X serialization. And for the image download, we will use the COIL uh, library. So I am pasting all of these dependencies here. So these are the new dependencies. And the navigation will be used for the view model. The view model class is um, coming with this navigation dependency. And they, I will have a basic navigation between a welcome screen and a list screen. So I will use the navigation component as well. In Compose, we have a Compose-specific navigation library. So that was all of the changes in the build gradle. And one more thing in the manifest file, I will say that use its permissions internet uh, because we use network communication and the NASA API already uses HTTPS. So I don't need the HTTP clear text setting here. So that's fine. So just the internet permission was added here. Now I will synchronize the project to make sure that all of the dependencies are downloaded. That's fine. Uh, by the way, if you have any questions, meanwhile, you can put in the comment section. I will answer those after the, the live coding section. So we have prepared everything for our project. Uh, we have an activity. I will just get rid of these greetings and previews and so on. And let me just create a basic navigation. I will have two screens. On the first screen, I will have a button in the middle, which will say start or show rover photos. And then I will have another screen which uh, will uh, show basically this list of stuff. So that's for the navigation. So I will create a new uh, package. Let's call it as navigation. In the navigation package, I will uh, create a screen file. Let's call it as screen. In this screen, it, it will be a sealed class because it will have the list of the screens with their routes or paths, paths. I will have a main screen and the NASA Mars uh, screen. These are the two screens or routes what I will have in my project. And now I will create the navigation graph. Unfortunately, it's not a visual graph, so we will don't have a designer for that like what we have in the standard UI framework. Uh, we just have a need to write it in code. And uh, I will put it here very quickly. Uh, just one second, and this will be, it will, uh, I will make the code much simpler for us. So we will have a main screen and we will have a NASA Mars API screen. These two, these will be two composable methods. They are red because we haven't created them yet. And the start destination is the main screen. So that's coming from the screen main route, which we have created here. That's the main and the, everything has a root property. Every screen has a root property. So in that case, that's the main. Otherwise, that's the NASA Mars uh, path. And they will open these two screens. So it's time to create a screen package. So I will create a UI.screen package. And in the screen package, I will create two Kotlin files. One is for main screen, main screen, and uh, the other one is for, oh, I don't remember, NASA Mars API screen. Okay, both of them will be composable functions. Oops, so I just put a composable annotation. Annotation, and these are functions. And right now they, they don't display uh, anything. And let's do the same for the main screen. This is the main screen. Right. Good. And now we can import these things in our navigation graph. So now we have these two screens, main and NASA Mars API. And in the main activity, I will actually open the navigation graph. So now when I launch the application, it will show the navigation graph, which is actually not a visible thing. But in the navigation graph, it says that the start destination is the main. So it will go to the main screen. And that will load the main screen composable. And let's just make something here. I will create a column. Uh, and I will put a button in this column. The on click will be just nothing. 
and the button will have a text all the uh, show rover photos okay that's it and um, i think if we launch the project now we will already see this button but it doesn't do anything because the on click is empty so just a second and uh, that will be visible Okay, the first launch of the project is always a little bit slower, but this is what we have now. The button is not doing anything. So the, it's a big thing. When it opens the activity, it goes to the navigation graph. The navigation graph goes to the main route. It will open the main screen composable, which has a button. I will just add some parameters to the column, like the modifier film size, so it will be the full screen column and alignment center vertically and horizontally. That's why the button will be now in the middle, as I promised. So if I launch the project now, you can see that the button is in the middle. Great. Now, when I press the button, I want to show the other composable screen. So just give a second. Uh, why is it having this strange empty line there? Hopefully it will be fixed next time. OK. So uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. what I will do is that the main screen will take a parameter. Uh, when the button is pressed, it will execute that Lambda. So on Mars API selected or on show photos pressed, I will just call this parameter here like this. And the type of this argument is a Lambda. It's a method which doesn't take any arguments and returns a unit. And when the button is pressed, I will call this method on show pressed. So when the button is pressed, it will call this method. And in the navigation graph, when I create the main screen, I need this method. So I will say that the on show photos pressed, it, when I press it, it should navigate to the NASA API screen. So it should go to this route. It should ask the navigation graph to show the screen which belongs to this route. This is actually what we will do. So uh, we will just say that navcontroller.navigate and uh, screen.nasamarsapi.root. That's it. And uh, we we need to uh, press it. And actually this one is a is a is a method an anonym method instance, so I can say that this is a lambda. So this code will be executed when I press the, uh, the button, because I have assigned here that the, the button should execute that lambda or that method. So now I launch the application again, and when I press the button, it shows an empty screen, because the NASA Mars API screen is an empty screen. So that's a, that's a good thing. We already have a navigation. We are navigating between two screens. In this particular demo, it doesn't have too much functionality, but I, I really wanted to show you in this webinar that even in Compose, you can make a nice code and you can handle the screen navigations uh, very well. And as you can see, I don't switch between activities. I don't use multiple activities and I don't even use fragments. In, in Compose, you don't necessarily need fragments. It's enough to switch between composables and it's quite efficient. Okay, the next thing is the network communication part because uh, in this uh, stuff we, we need such a thing. So first of all, uh, I will create a, a data package, just simply a data package. And in this data package, I will generate the data classes from this <coughs> JSON string that I uh, take back from the server. I will use the Kotlin data class file from JSON plugin. You can download it for Android Studio under the settings. And if you go to the plugin section and type uh, JSON, this JSON to Kotlin class is the plugin I already have installed it. And it's a very fun thing because if you press it and you paste the JSON string here, you can format it in a nice way. And you can say that uh, it will return a class name called rover photos and generate and it will actually generate you all of the data classes which represent the json data with what we retrieve from the server it will as you can see it returns a list of photos every photo has some property and this image url is the, the image link what we need so that was 
these data classes represent the, the, the JSON data. And now I will create a network package. Let's call it as network. And in the network package, again, because the time is limited, I will use some shortcuts. I will not use a separate repository layer. I will not support offline communications and offline behavior of the application. And I don't use dependency injection. We, we can learn about it later uh, in the course. Uh, so I will try to keep the code relatively simple. So what I'm doing now is that in the network package, I will create a Kotlin class. Let's call it as NASA Mars API service. And in this class, I'm adding some code. This is the API that I want to call. So the base URL from this API is this one, as you can see it here. I'm using the retrofit library for network communication. So I'm creating a retrofit object for this base URL. And I am using the Kotlin X serialization library. This is how you define that, use that for JSON serialization. I am creating an object uh, that is basically <coughs> using this retrofit object and using this API interface to, uh, to get the, the answer. So this is the rest of the URL. As you can see, this is this part. This is the rest of the URL, the path on the server. Sorry, I, have, I need to highlight this one as well. And after that, we have some query parameters, the earth date and the API key. So that's why in this API interface, I'm saying that this is the path and these are the path uh, details, elements, and these are the query parameters. And it will return rover photo objects, which I need to import. These, this is the data class that I have created this rover photos object. And this network query will execute the network communication, the REST API call, and it will return these rover photos objects, which was again generated from this JSON string. So the network communication part is ready. Now uh, we will create um, a view model for this NASA Mars API screen. Originally, I would put every different screen in every sub in a, in a sub package, but now because it's a demo, I just create the view model here, uh, NASA, Mars, how should I call this a view model? Uh, sorry, one more time. Let's call it as a NASA, Mars view model. Okay, this is my NASA, Mars view model. And actually the view model represents the business logic behind the screen, behind this uh, list screen. Let me show, so I'm, this is the screen that I'm talking about. And let's see what kind of states do we have in this screen. We have a success state. This is what we see now when we have the images and the result. We have a loading state where you have this loading icon and we can have an error state when the network communication has, an issue, has, has some uh, issues. Uh, so that's why I create a helper seal class for the different states. I'm going to have a, a, a success state, an error state, and a loading state. And in the view model, uh, I will just jump between these uh, states. So the body of my uh, view model is uh, is actually that's this is a view model. Well, and uh, in the view model, I will have a state this main UI state. Initially, it will start in the loading state. You can have an init state as well as a for state, but in this demo, it, I just want to keep it short. And initially, it will just download the images from this date, just to have some default images in the screen. And uh, we have a method called get rover photos. It takes a date. We will have an input field for that. And after it takes a date, uh, it will switch to the loading state so we can show the progress bar. Then it will uh, uh, execute the network communication. I'm sending here the date parameter and the demo key parameter. Every if everything is okay, we will jump to the success state. Otherwise, the error state to show the different uh, exceptions. So that's my view model. And uh, now I will use this view model in the NASA API screen. Luckily, it's relatively easy. Every composable 
method can have a view model in a very easy way. NASA Mars view model equals to view model. There is a delegate method here or a helper method here uh, that creates an instance from this view model and uh, in a kind of a singleton way it will give us a, a, the same view model as long as this screen is active. Now I will create our basic user interface. So uh, I will just say that we will have a, let me just close it here. So we will have a, a text for the current date. This is the initial date. We have a column. In the column, we have an input field. This is the outlined text field. That's kind of an input field where you can type some things. It always connected to this um, state. So when I change something in the text view, this state will be updated. That's why the text field will be updated with, with what I'm typing in the text field. It's a single line uh, input field and it has a nice icon because in every text field can have a nice icon in Compose in a very easy way. And I will have a button which will just uh, download the images from the NASA Mars view model when I and it has a the refresh text. So now, if I launch the application, we will see that the second screen, the NASA Mars API screen already has this uh, exception in the background because there is some some stuff in the serialization but it's totally fine uh, I, I expected it that it will not uh, work in the beginning because it has some we haven't registered some class and the network communication is not ready yet so don't worry about that we will uh, fix it very uh, soon so just a second and we are not ready with the UI uh, code as well so the next step is to uh, actually I, I see a small typo here. It's again Marsh Rover photos, and in the view model I want to call that method. All right, and uh, one more thing is that uh, we currently in the screen we just have the button, but we don't have the rest of the data here, so the the result is not displayed. This is something that we should do. Hopefully we will do it in a moment. Let me just check now this uh, exception. Uh-huh, uh I needed to have one more plugin in the build gradle. I forget to add uh, in the build gradle that when I'm using the Kotlin serialization, then in the plugin section, I need to add these two more um, plugin IDs here. So that, that's the reason why it was not able to process the JSON from the server. So now I'm synchronizing the project. We should not see this exception anymore. I'm clearing it. Okay, here we are. And now we don't have an exception, but we don't see the data here. That's totally fine because I need to create this list user interface. I will do it in uh, two small steps. Uh, I already have prepared uh, a card which represents one photo. Let's call it as rover photo card. I will put it in the NASA Mars API screen, but outside this composable function below here. And let's call it as rover photo card. It takes the rover name, the current date and the photo URL. And in a card, in Compose, we have a card element which looks like a card view. It I just make some rounded corners, some default background and so on. I have two texts, one for the rover name, one for the selected date. And I will use this async image. This is coming from the Coil library. If you give any image URL to that, it will download the image in an asynchronous way that will be displayed here. And the last thing is that I need to display these uh, photos, which I have retrieved from the view model. And in order to do that, uh, we will need to handle the states in our composable method. So as you can see in the view model, we have defined these states, success, error, and loading. And now in my Compose UI, below the button, I will just put some code, which will dif display different user interface for different states. It looks like this, that I am monitoring the state. If it's the loading state, it will just show this circular progress indicator. This is the loading bar. If we are in the success state, 
it will open the result screen. It will be a separate compose method. I'm creating it. Actually, I just create it now. Composable fun result screen, or actually we can generate it. You just click here, Alt Enter or Option Return on Mac, create composable function and run. We have this nice composable function, which will be implemented later. In case of error, it will just display an error uh, message. And now this uh, result screen, it will take the rover photos, these rover photos objects. I just need to iterate over this list and uh, display the rover photo cards, uh, uh, rover photo cards for every photo which is in this uh, array. So uh, in order to do that, uh, I will use a lazy column, which is very similar to the uh, recycler view if you have experience from the standard Android UI framework. I just need to import this items helper. It doesn't, for, for some reason in Compose, it doesn't find it automatically. I'm pretty sure that they will fix it later. And now I will just create a lazy column. This is kind of the recycler view. It's a dynamic thing. So it will just load uh, those items which are visible on the screen, very efficient. I will just say that it will use the full screen modifier.filmx uh, filmx with the width point of view. And uh, in this lazy column, I will iterate over the rover photos, items, and rover photos result. Sorry, again, rover photos result. I don't know why I use double use there. So rover photos result dot photos and now it iterates over this array uh, these these uh, yes this this array and every time it will just display a rover photo card the rover name is the uh, it uh, dot rover dot name the current date will be uh, it dot earth date actually I don't need this Uh, Earth date, yes. And the photo URL will be the uh, <coughs> it dot. Uh, sorry, I'm not using null exceptions. Uh, I could use Elvis operator here. I could use the Kotlin let and that kind of stuff. I'm just really running to have a working version pretty soon. So I will just use this double banks to handle the null pointer exceptions in the course, we will have a much better solution for that. It's a very simple one. So that's it. Uh, when I get back the photos in this lazy column, I will display these rover photo cards for every images. And I think we are ready. That's all. Because when we jump to the success state, this is how we get back the photos from the network request. And, uh, and uh, that will give us everything uh, what we need. One more typo fixing and that's it. Now I start the project and I should have the same application that I showed you in the beginning of the webinar. Show photos and here we are. Hopefully the images, maybe my network communication is a little bit slow, but uh, they should come up. Let me just have another date. That's too far. Okay, here we are. So these are the photos and the application is working. We have it in a very nice way. So that was all this quick demo in 35 minutes or something like that. I'm, I'm sorry if I was sometimes too fast, but uh, I, I just wanted to have a working version, give a working version to you. Uh, as soon as possible. Uh, I, I hope you have liked this demo and um, you have uh, understood and enjoyed uh, the Compose. I can tell you that when I started to learn the Compose in the beginning, I was also a little bit, because I had a lot of 
previous experience in the XML based layouts, I was a little bit skeptic that is it good, is it not good? But when I'm using it more and more, I, I actually pretty like that and it, it makes sense and you can organize the code very efficiently and you can very nicely create reusable, composable methods with these arguments if you use them in a clever way. And if you use small methods, then your code will be much more uh, uh, reusable. So uh, that was all, Just now just a quick summary. So some ideas how you can develop this application further. Uh, if you want, you can have a much more complex architecture, like you, you can check what's the MVI architecture is. It will make the code a little bit more separated the layers. You can use repository helper classes to support offline behavior and network behavior, have some data in the cache when the network communication is not working to have offline support. You can use dependency injection with the Hilt library, it's supported in Compose as well. You can of course have unit and UI tests, which is very important in every uh, project. And you can have some additional features like share your favorite photos with friends or a better date selector, because right now, as you can see, our, our date selector is actually just a text field. So it, uh, 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 it, it is not as official, professional. You can have a nice calendar and date selector. For that, we didn't have time for it. You can have larger images. You can have a zoom feature to zoom into the images, see it in full screen. So there are many options to improve this application, but still, I hope that it uh, this demo give you a feeling uh, how Compose code looks like and how quickly you can create nice applications with uh, Jetpack Compose. That was all for the live coding section. Uh, section. Thank you for uh, watching. Uh, I will upload the code uh, to the GitHub repository to you. And now I'm open for questions and we can talk about Compose if you have any questions, ideas, recommendations. Thank you. Uh, I can't hear you, Adam. You are muted. I'm um, sorry. So I'm back, and uh, we are waiting for the questions. And we only three minutes left, but I think if we have questions, we can we can have some extra minutes. So please don't uh, uh, keep your questions in yourself. Um, meanwhile, uh, while you are writing your questions, I have I have a question to Peter. Is there any case when you would still recommend the old way, or or like mm. so Jetpack is uh, not 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 really. I, if I have a chance to work on a new Android project, I would try to use Compose, and only if there is something that I cannot do that I can I can turn back to the old. Uh, technique, but actually Compose and the old view framework, they work very well together. So you can say that this part of the screen that I am showing, sorry, this part of the screen will be using the old technique, the rest will be in Jetpack Compose. So it's fully compatible, these two technologies. So there's nothing to be afraid of using Compose. Okay, so it's like why, uh, it's, I think that's also the the answer to my second question. That why would you recommend to to start learning Android Jetpack Compose even if someone is an experienced Android developer? The amount of code is much less, which means that the possibilities of making bugs is much less, and you can really create reusable user interface elements much simpler. And actually, uh, you can create much clever code, much clever code, because all the nice logic uh, from the state management and so on is, is, is supported by Compose. And you can really create clever code with this. OK. And uh, yeah, you mentioned already uh, that we have uh, uh, a training based on Jetpack Compose. Uh, this week-long Android uh, developer course. So if anyone is interested in uh, delving into this uh, technology, even being a, a beginner, uh, and also if uh, you are an experienced developer, as Peter mentioned, it's it's also a good way to, to jump into it. Now, OK, we have a question. Thank you. It was great. I don't have any specific questions now. I will check and analyze the code. Thank you again. Okay, thank you. 
for your comment, last though. Uh, we have another question in lazy columns. Uh, I'm gonna show this question in lazy columns. So it's enough to iterate through a list to fill the UI element, not necessary to implement any adapter class as in case of recycle. Review. Yes, yes, it's a very good question. And the answer is yes. It's much easier to use lazy column than the old recycler view. We don't need any helper adapter class. We don't need the view holder pattern. None of this is necessary. And the lazy column gives you the same performance what uh, we got used to in the recycler view. So it was actually one of the main reasons why Jetpack Compose is very good because we don't need to struggle with the recycler view and with all of the boilerplate codes anymore. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for the question. Um, yeah, that's wonderful. <laughs> I agree. Okay, so so if you, anyone is interested in this course, I'm gonna leave this link in the comment section where you can find uh, the uh, details of this course. It's gonna be launched soon. So if you would like to reserve a spot, then don't forget to uh, sign up. It's gonna be um, a cohort-based uh, course. That means it will be launched in a scheduled, weekly scheduled way with the mentoration of, uh, of Peter. He, he's gonna be available during this 10, week, 10 weeks. Uh, he, he's gonna answer your questions, give feedback to, to your um, uploaded uh, codes, uh, you, so you get a code review. And also there's a, a limited number of participants with who you could practice or uh, connect to share your experiences. And um, everything's gonna be in the details. Uh, Just we will have we will have live live session. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, thank you. So, uh, after every element, after every week, you have a chance to have a live discussion with me between each other. We can talk about problems. We can talk about the homeworks, and I will give you some ideas and some additional things, extra things in this live live. Thank you for uh, thank you for the supplementary information. That's a quite important information. Yeah. Uh, so, and because of this interaction, the, the number of participants are limited. So uh, don't forget to, to enroll in time. And also don't forget to subscribe to our uh, channels, to Facebook, LinkedIn, or YouTube channels, because we're going to come back with such uh, uh, interesting and exciting um, uh, webinars. For example, we're going to have one uh, uh, with a similar live demo of uh, cloud native application development, also about Python pandas and much more. So don't forget to subscribe and uh, thank you very much again for being with us, also Peter, and also those who were still uh, until the end. So thank you for your questions and everything. Thank, thank you, you very much. It was a pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.